Hi everyone, Susan, welcome back to This Week in HCG Beauty. Um, this week I'm going to take a little departure. Um, I had some questions on my background, that kind of thing. So I was born in um, 1961 in Calgary, Alberta, uh, where Canada, where I still live. Um, as a matter of fact, I now live in the house that I grew up in, um, which I inherited after my parents died. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, so I was um, I was uh, I was born to a Scottish immigrant father and a French immigrant mother. She was French and German, and um, they they had an affair. And I was born, and they put me up for adoption. And three months later, I was adopted um, by my wonderful parents. Uh, they were German immigrants, and um, they were 39 and 40 years old, respectively. Um, I was an only child and um, always a little overweight, so I struggled with that. I got teased a lot as a kid um, in school because I was chubby. I wasn't obese, but I was a little overweight. I was chubby. Not fat, but chubby. Um, but enough to get teased a lot. Um, and then... Um, when I was um, 17, um, I was working at a mall, 16 I guess, not quite 17, so probably 16 and a half. Anyways, <laughs> I, um, I got discovered, so to speak, and began modeling, uh, began a modeling career. Um, so obviously I wasn't chubby anymore at that point. Um, when I was 15, I worked um, for the summer as a wrangler on um, on a cattle ranch and ended up um, with just bad well water or like you know river water or something and ended up with uh, really bad jaundice and after a couple of months of being very sick I had lost a lot of weight so um, and managed to somehow keep it off for uh, for a bit of time so um, once I was discovered, um, because I'm only 5'3", it was mostly for editorial work, um, and I was never thin enough. So they gave me little packets, little baggies full of dexedrine, um, which is essentially speed. And um, I also became anorexic six days a week and bulimic on Sundays. So I, my food log at that point... Um, I burned it when my daughter was about two because I never wanted her to have that that issue um, with self-image that I grew up with. Um, but I was eating, I, I would even put calories to a stick of chewing gum or a Tic Tac or, you know. Um, so I was eating between 200 and 100 and, or 200, 20 to 120 calories a day is what I was living on six days a week. And on Sundays, I had a friend um, she and who was bulimic, and she and I would go from one start at breakfast and go pig out, and then make ourselves throw up. And we took laxatives, um, huge amounts of laxatives. Would go on to another restaurant and eat our fill and purge, and then you know, and we continued doing that until about ten at night on Sunday. Um, and then Monday, I'd go back to eating between twenty and one hundred and twenty calories a day. Uh, and taking dexedrine in copious amounts as well. Um, and then when I was 17, uh, well, 18, I guess, I was in a really bad car accident. Yeah, I think I just turned 18. Um, in any case, uh, I was thrown clear of the vehicle. It was on a highway and um, smashed my face open when I hit the pavement, as well as, you know, a fractured skull, detached retina, um, um, shattered hip um, and knee uh, and uh, so recovery I was pronounced dead at the scene but obviously yay here I am uh, not dead but um, the recovery took um, the better part of two years to get really completely back on track um, and then in that time I had plastic surgery on the scar that they had done in um, in the emergency room but my modeling career was over um, so I had learned a lot about skincare and makeup artistry um, during my time as a model, um, and so I continued in that vein and um, studied under a couple of really good makeup artists, a um, handful of them, and did a lot of, and have spent the time since then doing a lot of um, 
primarily performance makeup, so for theater um, and dance and opera, that kind of thing, but also working a lot with um, with everyday people um, and uh, in the cosmetics industry and skin care. Um, when, yeah, and so after my modeling career ended, I did go to um, university. I'd wanted to be a doctor, so I um, majored in biology and chemistry, um, but dropped out and uh, meant to only drop out for a semester so that I could work and save some more money for school and um, also recharge my batteries because it was really very stressful. And, um, and I never went back. Um, and... Then in 1985, I got married. 1986, my daughter was born. Um, I put on a lot of weight with my pregnancy, and when I delivered, I was 210 pounds. And like I said, being only five foot three, that was a lot of weight. I'd gone from as a model, my low weight of, at 102 pounds, uh, to you know all of a sudden 210 pounds. Not sudden, but you know. Um, and my um, my husband was very critical of, you know, I won't have a fat wife, was one of his sayings, was, you know. And uh, I just won't have a fat wife. And it was very difficult because, I mean, you know, it takes a while to lose that much weight. And it was, yeah, it was very stressful um, dealing with that. And it just reinforced my poor self-image. Um, and... Um, yeah, when I was 50, my, my father, um, both my parents have passed on, as I mentioned. My father was always a problem drinker. When I was 15, he became a, a full-blown alcoholic, and that was um, it was really hard to deal with. It was a lot of stress, and I had to be a, a support for my mom because uh, she had trouble dealing with that. Um, so that, that was a big challenge as well in life. Anyways, when my and then my son was born in 1991, my daughter was a really large baby. She was nine and a half pounds and 24 inches long, and so um, my body was. It took a big toll on my body being that heavy and then that big around because I'm not that big a person. With my son, I only gained 40 pounds, but he was 10 pounds, a 10 pound baby, and he was all out front. I didn't look pregnant from the back, but from the side, it was like whoa. Um, and, you know, gaining 40 pounds. Again, it takes some time to lose that, and plus I was pretty stretched out. Um, and then got the old, you know, I won't have a fat wife thing again. Uh, when my son went to kindergarten, I went back to school, and I became a chartered herbalist, and my, um, my major was in nutrition, and continued all that time to do makeup and, you know, be involved in that kind of thing. And um, in 2004, um, I left my husband while well, I filed for divorce. And uh, again, a really stressful time um, as well. I had suffered off and on from, from depression, not knowing what it was really. Um, but um, that became more prevalent um, as, as I got older. Um, and then in 2009, I was diagnosed with a, um, a rare and inoperable uh, kidney cancer. And I'd already previously, in 2000, been diagnosed with um, autoimmune Graves' disease, which is a disease, autoimmune disease of the thyroid. Um, so dealing with all that, um, went through cancer treatment, and that was, you know, all well and good. Um, and then... Getting back on the road to health, I gained, you know, I gained a lot of weight afterwards, after um, finishing treatment. So I started, a friend of mine encouraged me to start running. We went to a, a boot camps together, um, and I ran two half marathons, and uh, I started on HCG at that time, and that was 2010, I believe. Um, so I did, uh, I lost a lot of weight, went down to 115 pounds on HCG, and was very happy with that. And um, and then I was um, in 2000, the end of 2011, um, the end of December. I was diet. I was told that the tumor was starting to come back just a little, so I'd have to go on a six-month oral chemo regimen. So I did that. Um, but at that time, I also 
um, my depression, I went through a really, really, really bad bout of depression, so I was on two really strong antidepressant drugs as well as the chemo, and I gained an awful lot of weight. So 2012 saw me at 167 pounds, and I wasn't happy. So uh, thanks to HCG Chica, um, I got got uh, back on HCG, and uh, and then that's where this journey started. Um, so I'm a veteran of you know of HCG, but by no means um, am I as well informed as HCG Chica is, or you know some of the other uh, YouTubers out there on this topic. Um, what my expertise is, just my experience, and also, um, you know, skin care and makeup that is um, safe for phase 2 HCG use as well became a real passion of mine. Um, yeah, so that's kind of my, my background in a nutshell. My daughter is uh, 26 and has now graduated university and is working with an English literature degree and is working as an associate editor. Um, for a trade publication. My son is going to be 22 in May. He lives with me. My daughter lives with her boyfriend. Um, and um, my son lives with me. Uh, he works as a um, roofing estimator and uh, is a musician. So he writes, um, records, does vocals, plays every every instrument under the sun, um, and is working on, a, on his first album and as well as getting his career as a producer um, underway. Um, yeah, and so recently I've been, in the last four or five months, I've been told a lot of times I should become a, a stylist, so I'm thinking of becoming an image consultant. Uh, what I love about makeup artistry is that you can take take somebody who seems quite shy, maybe reserved, um, not really confident and when you dress them up properly you know dress them well uh, show them how to put things together and what fits their body what doesn't and then do their makeup and show them how to do their makeup uh, all of a sudden everything they have locked inside them they, their inner their confidence and their inner beauty is reflected on the outside so what's inside isn't hidden anymore it's now also on the outside and watching them just blossom through that, become more empowered. Um, it's it's very satisfying. So, yeah, doing that is having done the makeup part of it. Um, and, you know, having my friends all tell me, I you know, always asking me to go shopping with them and dress them and things. And now having strangers tell me that that's something that they think I should do, uh, that I would be good at. I'm thinking of doing that. I find that women, and I did manage a clothing store for a year. And I did find that women um, either, well, they don't dress for their bodies. They either, they're either, you know, they're either dressing in clothes that are a size too small, so it's not very flattering, or more often than not, they're dressing in clothes that are too big for them, and therefore they're, again, hiding in their clothes. Um, so dressing well is a big thing. Again, brings out your inner beauty, your inner confidence, and when you look your best, you're just more confident, more empowered, and, you know, that's that's part of how you become successful in life as well, is just, you know, everybody is drawn to someone who is confident um, in their and comfortable in their own skin. So I'd like to go further in helping people achieve that. Um, yeah, so anyways, if you, I'm open to suggestions for this week in, in HCG Beauty, what you'd like to hear about, what you'd like me to cover, and if you want me to start doing things like um, makeup tutorials, outfit of the day, makeup lessons, um, that kind of thing, just let me know. This is, I'm kind of doing this channel for you. This My stats part of, the, the, of it is more just sharing my journey with you, um, but this is really more for you so me, I guess, paying it forward, and so anything I can do um, to help you on your journey to being your, your best, looking and feeling your best, because if you're on HCG, I'm assuming that you want to look better, and um, if I can help in any way, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm doing this HCG Beauty blog for. So uh, do let me know, give me your suggestions, and um, for upcoming videos, 
And uh, until next week, uh, stay happy, healthy, and um, successful. Bye.